Hey folkies! My name is Emily Valken and I play Scandinavian folk music on fiddle and nickel harpa. In this video I'm gonna talk to you about one thing, hulling. Before we get into the subject, I want to add three things. Uh, first, I know only what I know, my usual disclaimer, so I know only what I have learned. I don't know more, I can forget things and I can also make mistakes. If you spot a mistake, just please write to me and tell me nicely. Um, second, what I'm going to tell you today about hulling is a big, big generalization about a huge subject. So I will put on the side many points. My videos are already too long and I can't treat all details. So it's just a global picture. It's an overview. And third, for people who are not comfortable with Scandinavian languages, I will list all names of people, tunes, instruments and places in the description. Now, let's get started. What is Halling? Halling is a type of dance from Scandinavia, mostly Norway and also a bit of Sweden. As you can see, these are the Halling tunes that I know and play. It's called Halling because the, like, the center region for it, the most typical region for Halling is Hallingdal, which is around here in Norway. Another name that you can uh, hear about the Halling dance is Laus, um, especially in the regions of Hallingdal and Valdes. And Laus means loose, which doesn't mean that you are loose in your movements, but that you're dancing solo in opposition to dancing in a couple. And this Laus dance can be a part of another dance, like a springer or or something, or it can be a dance in itself and just be this uh, dance that maybe you have seen or not, which is um, walking on the beat in a big circle, on a big circle, and then doing figures. And those figures can be from very very simple, just walking, adding a little thing here and there, to very acrobatic and impressive. And the most impressive and technical one. Uh, as it is considered, is kicking a hat that is pretty high in the air and kicking it with the feet, so doing a salto and kicking it. That's why howling is also called sometimes the hat dance. The background of howling uh, is basically that the young lads in Norway and Sweden maybe uh, wanted to get a wife and wanted to impress the ladies. So they would dress up in beautiful clothes and show their skills and their ability and their grace and their strength. Today the dance has evolved a lot and although this is still performed, for example in uh, folk competitions, uh, howling is mostly like just a folk dance as Polska shot this and so on. I don't know about Norwegian dance evenings, but in Sweden Although Halling is not very well known, you have still mostly Polska, Slang Polska, Vals, Schottis. Um, if there is a band playing one Halling, very probably people will be very happy and dance it. Especially young people. But it's open to old, to old ages, to old people, to children, men, women, everyone uh, can dance Halling and bring something else to the dance. I won't go further into the dancing of Halling so Laus dance. I will put some videos to show you my favorite Halling dances and so on in the description. Now, now let's get more into the music. Halling is played mostly traditionally on several instruments and the first one is fiddles. I say fiddles in plural because it can be a regular fiddle or a Hardingfelle. Another instrument that is pretty traditional is trall, so singing with words or usually just syllables. Another one that you can hear pretty commonly, pretty often, is just harp. And this thing, I don't know if you see it, maybe better. Um, and this has nothing to do with those ridiculous small juice harps that we have uh, in continental Europe. I've seen enormous juice harps in Norway, like that big, super thick, very strong sound. And it's very interesting because the beat is given by the fingers and melody is given by the overtones. So it's very subtle and it's very rhythmical, very good for learning actually to dance it. Then there are other instruments that are traditionally used, flutes, 
I've heard just recently played on a kind of uh, long like as well, or uh, can be percussions. There was and there still is in some places a tradition for percussions in uh, Scandinavian folk music. I am doing some research about that at the moment. I don't know much about it yet, um, but I think it's really interesting. So why not drums? And of course, Halling can be played with any instrument. You can play it on mandolin, I've heard beautiful Halling on cello, guitar, clarinet, all flute, uh, saxophone. So all instruments can basically play Halling. It's just interesting to remember that Halling playing, Halling music has been shaped by the fact that it was played mostly on fiddles. So um, what I'm going to talk about in this video is mostly both instruments related. Also because that's the instrument I play. So how is Halling sounding like? What is, what is it sounding like? Now, the first thing that can be strange or surprising when you hear Halling if you're not used to uh, Norwegian music and to modal music and also if you are mostly like classically tuned or something uh, tuned, <laughs> classically trained <laughs> Um, is that it's very modal, so you will have lots of drones, and you'll have lots of frictions, and you will have also blue notes, lots of them. Um, one mode that is especially used in Halling music is Lydium, but there are many other ones. Also another thing that may be surprising, especially if you are um, used to Swedish music, like other types, Polska, Schottis, Balfolk music or Celtic music, is that those, those tunes, those folk tunes like Balfour, for example, we very often have like two parts and every part is repeated two times, maybe three parts, like A, A, B, B, C, C, A, A, B, B, C, C. Halling sometimes does follow that pattern, but mostly not. Halling tunes are usually composed of lots and lots of little bits, like small phrases that are repeated in an order that is not always defined. Sometimes it's defined, for example, A, A, B, C, 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 A, B, for example. But sometimes it's just up to the musician to decide. And the musician will also, every time uh, they repeat a part, they will add variations to it. They will change it a little bit to make it more interesting. And the fact that it's so variable, that you vary it a lot around the melody, the little bits that are the melody, makes like it's kind of logical because it's usually a solo music. It has been mostly played by a solo musician in a corner while the dancers are dancing. Of course, nowadays there are many people who play it in duo, in big bands, and so on. But in this case, you need to decide of a structure, like how many times you play each part. Um, I have a tendency to classify howling tunes in two types, depending on the rhythm they have. The first like type would be the proper howling type, which is usually in 2-4 or 4-4, four, four, depends how you write it, but with variations. So it can be 5-4 for a beat or two or something. It's a bit variating. And the other type would be the gonga type, and this is in 6-8. Whatever, <laughs> just have something in mind. Um, I will play for you two tunes so you can hear the difference between those two types. The first tune is a proper Halling type tune. It's actually this one. It's one of the very rare Swedish Hallings. And it's also one of the very rare, very rare Hallings with two parts and repeating A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. So very similar to the rest of Swedish music, folk music. Here it is. Uh, Halling efter Permir från Heridalen. Thank you. 
played first time uh, just simple melody so you can get the melody and then add it variations and ornaments. So that's for the um, Halling type and now the Gangar type. I know it's not Gangar, Gangar is a specific dance and type of tune, but I call it Gangar type because Gangar tunes are in 6 8 and Halling, this type of Halling is as well. And um, Gangar in 6 8, for this tune I have chosen a Norwegian Halling, which is Espelansjenten, Etter Unnilovlet, Fra Honningdal, Sogna Fjordane. And this one has actually a structure that is fixed. It's very short. It's A A B B A. When you loop it, you have three A's. Once more, two times. First time simple, then with variations. That's more comfortable. <laughs> which is trolled, how it sounds. Mm. Take it in C, it's easier. The voice. Suddenly they are, suddenly do, suddenly do, suddenly they are, do. Suddenly they are, suddenly do, suddenly do, suddenly they are, do. They are, do, suddenly do, they are, do, suddenly they do. Suddenly they are, da, da, do, he, oh, sa, da, do, li, da, di, do. This is for the two rhythms, and um, what is the difference between the two types, two rhythm, two rhythmical types? Well, basically, there is not much. The music is built differently considering the time signature, signature, but the feeling is the same, pretty much, and the dance is the same. The tempo can vary a little bit. I've, I have an impression that Ganga type is usually played a little bit slower than Halling type, but basically it's similar. Talking about tempo, uh, usually a halling is played between 95 and 105 beats per minute. It's a dance which is kind of tricky in the way that you can't really play it very much slower or very much faster because it gets really quickly difficult for the dancers. If you play too slow, some turns, for example, especially slow turns, will be very hard for them to keep their balance, they won't manage. And uh, if you play too fast, on the other hand, like the acrobatic stuff will be very hard because they won't have time to do them, like to bend the muscles and do the, the movements. So it's pretty important to keep your tempo. And I will hear say what all music teachers tell the students and all students are like, yeah, yeah, I don't really do it. Which is if you're not fully sure that you're very steady in your rhythm and even if you are sure, it's better to check with a metronome. Uh, I say that I also have trouble doing it myself. Um, even more than the tempo, what is very important in Halling is the feeling. It's extremely much driving forwards. It's not jumpy as a Schottis, Polka or even some Polskas that are really... Uh -uh. It's not doing like that. There is some up and down movement, but it's more like going forwards, 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 very, very much. It's a bit similar to slang Polska in this aspect, a bit, and it's not the same thing. Um, driving forwards doesn't mean you're playing quicker. Once more, check your tempo. Um, how to get a very good driving forward feeling? Being steady and having, having a very continuous sound. You have maybe noticed that my bow is not lifting, I'm very on the string and keeping it intense all the time. Drone is actually also something that makes the sound more even, but you also want to vary and to 
put different energies into your playing. I'm coming back to that later. One trick that is extremely common in Halling music is to use the backbeat. Backbeat is an amazing tool because it's really swingy. It's really something that is catchy and it gives a lot of energy. Careful though, it's not backbeat as in punk or maybe old times, uh, American old time music or things like that. It's not once more a backbeat that is stronger than the beat. It can be sometimes, but in your brain and in your playing, it has to stay very clear where is the backbeat and where is the beat. And if it's clear there and there, in your hands and in your brain, your dancers should not get confused. Because if you are confused about where your beat and your backbeat is, which one is which, your dancers will probably start stomping on the backbeat instead of on the beat. Also, if you play your backbeat too strong compared to your beat, your dancer will have a tendency to do what I call the duck walking, so they will do this kind of movement when they dance, which is, it's not what you want. You want them to go forward. You want to give them a lot of energy to do their moves forwards. How to get a good backbeat feeling without it being too strong? Well, one thing that you may have noticed when I played the two tunes before is the bowing pattern. And here, by I introduce the reversed bowing pattern, as I call it, which is the fact of changing your bow exactly on the backbeat and not on the beat. So if I stomp the beat, playing on the beat would be this. On the reverse, playing on the backbeat would be this. exercise that you can do. You stomp the beat or you get a metronome doing the beat for you and you try to change your bow exactly on the back beat, on an open string. And then you try to put this into your bowing patterns when you play a Halling tune. Usually, I would say most Halling tunes, when they have defined phrases, defined parts, they will begin and end on the beat, but in between they will be reversed. For example, if I take the Halling at the Perme again, which is the A part, I start on the beat and I go on the back beat. And I finish on the beat again. Then, to add to your playing, I've talked about variations. So every time you repeat a part or you loop something, here comes the variation. Shit, I wanted to say that later. Uh, the two variations you can do, there are many, many, and this is up to your musicality. But there are two things that you can do that are easy and effective. First is looping, what I just said. Take a part, it can be just two notes, it can be a whole part, and you loop it, and you repeat it many, many times. And if you play with the dynamics, for example, from loud to quiet, with keeping the energy very intense or opposite, can give a lot to your dancers and can create a very good contact between you and the dancers. And another variation that is very simple, very traditional and very effective is adding a drone or removing it. You're playing in D minor pretty much or D Lydian something, just add a D, add an open string or an A and adding it, removing it, playing more on the drone than on the melody or reverse is already a lot of variation. And then you can change your drone. Maybe you will play one phrase first on, with a D drone and then on, with an E drone, making a big tension. You are allowed to do that because this is modal music. Um, ornamentations are not going to be in this video because I'm planning to do a whole video about Scandinavian traditional ornamentations. So for now you have those two variations, loop and drone, which is already super fun. I would like to give you some more information uh, more <laughs> information about uh, people you can look up for um, getting more playing of Halling and copying good style and getting inspired. I would recommend uh, six musicians. Ellen Viken from Norway, Fiddle and Harding Fele. Sunne Vebjörsat, 
Uh, also Harding Fiala Fiddle as well, I think. Also Norway, absolutely great. Benedicte Marchette, she's maybe my favorite. <laughs> she's a bit my queen of uh, howling style and so on. She plays a lot, all types of howling. She has done uh, research about old instruments, old hardened fellows. She plays also viola d'amore and she has a very intensive and energetic sound. Absolutely amazing. Ornon Egeland, very well known, extremely good. One Swede, which was my, uh, my teacher before, uh, Patrick Andersen and he plays Harding Fiddle and Fiddle. And this is a tip for people who are bored. If you are a bowed instrument player and you don't really know what to do anymore, you don't know what to practice, I suggest that you check Patrick's videos and you try to understand and copy his bowings because he has bowing patterns that are unusual, extremely interesting, very effective, and it will keep you busy for months, really. And last but not least, I would like to add Ander Glien, a Norwegian amazing player, Haringfele and Nikol Harpa, which is really interesting. And here, a special tip, if you are a singer, you should definitely look up her band Böcken of Rusa, because they have lots of songs, and actually lots of trals and songs with lyrics, including Halling, several Halling tunes. So it's really, really interesting. We are now at the end of this video. I hope it was interesting, I hope you learned things. If you have questions about anything, as usual, please write to me, ask me. I love nerdy questions and I will answer them very gladly. Also, if you have suggestions, uh, critics about the videos, if I talk too slow or too fast, I talked a bit faster in this video because I'm trying to shorten them a bit, so just tell me. Um, also, if you have suggestions for future videos, please Tell me, uh, this video is actually the result of a suggestion of someone, so uh, all ideas are welcome, also critics, why not? And I would like to say a very big thank you to you who just watched this video and also to all people who have supported me during, like, from the start of those videos and who have given me feedback and ideas and critics and so on. You are all amazing and your support means so much, so much to me. Thank you very, very much. That's all for today. I wish you good end of November and see you next time. And I hope you'll get a lot of pleasure playing and or dancing. <laughs>